Hi, welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at this open source alternative to Adobe Lightroom called Rapid Raw, running here on Linux. Uh, this program has some nice presets here. I did change the preview resolution to 4K. You can run Comfy UI. You do have to do a custom server setup though. I do believe they're gonna have a, a Docker container that will just be pre-configured and have all the proper models and check files that you need to make it work. But they have a nice keyboard shortcut stuff built in here. And this is not using LibRaw or raw speed. It's using a uh, raw loader, I believe. Something like that that's written in Rust. But I do have a file open in here. We're going to go ahead and go in. This is uh, stuff from 2016. So 8-22-2016. So it'd be August 22nd of 2016. I think I'm going to edit this file here. And I have tested my Lumix S5.2 files do load into this program actually. And they look very, very good. But something I like about this program is I like the tone curve functionality. So I'll just adjust this slightly. Let's get a little bit of contrast going. That looks pretty good. I will bring highlights down, whites down because I am going to bump the exposure slightly on the image to maybe about there. And these are all expandable. So I can go to color. You got your vibrance, saturation, you have some color grading tools, blending and balance. But for now, I'm just gonna cool the image just a hair, not a lot. You can isolate colors like orange. You'll find orange in everybody's skin. So you can bring that down. You see orange stuff in the image, changes. So I may bring this down just a hair or two. Then you can go to details. You got sharpness, you got clarity, dehaze. You know, dehaze does as you expect. Double click will undo it. Structure, you know, does what you expect. It kind of makes the noise of the image a bit sharper. Clarity kind of helps a little bit if I Go here, I hit space, that might be a bug, so that's there. But the image looks good there. So far I do like the quality that this is producing. But let me see here, if I find an image, it'd be much easier to find an image where she's not sticking off of the uh, frame too much. Let's see, if I go here, this is something I've already edited. You do have your cropping tools. You got all of this. You do have masking and this is AI based, by the way. So if I do this and just kind of scribble on her, it'll analyze the image. It is very, very slow from what I'm finding, even though it is very much GPU driven. That is the whole purpose of this program. You'll see it's analyzing the image, but I have let it sit here for about 30 minutes in the past and have had it not mask the image. Maybe that's because I'm running a AMD Radeon GPU. I'm unsure of what GPU acceleration this is using, if it's OpenGL or Vulkan or anything like that. But if I go here, you see no difference because it has not masked the image. But you have all of your curves, color, everything when you're able to mask the image. I would test this under Windows, but I'd have to reinstall Windows in order to do that. Hopefully this gets worked out a little bit more. Maybe I'll figure out what's causing it to not work right. But so far, just the basic stuff that I have in this program, I mean, it's producing phenomenal results. And all of these uh, masks, they're layer-based, so it is a non-destructive editing tool in this program. You can create your uh, presets for your editing presets. Maybe make some filmic presets in this program. This is the comfy UI area. I've tested it some. I've done an upscale of an image from a 24 megapixel and I upscaled it to like 40 megapixels. Runs good. Comfy UI complains about running out of memory though. 
but that I did get working because I have multiple upscalers installed. Unsure of which one it's using because it's not actually telling me. Even Comfy UI in the terminal, I'm having trouble finding what it's saying. You know, you got your saving out of everything. You know, you can keep original metadata, you know, and you can remove GPS data, stuff like that. You can resize the fit, quality, you know, things like that. But this program is very, very, very good. So I'm actually going to go to home real quick, change folder, and I want to go here. We're just going to go load something else. We're going to go into photography. 22. Let's see. We're going to go here. Now these are Nikon NEF files. I just wanted to show how it, it spends its time loading the files, but this is also a means of testing the highlight recovery that this program can do. This is an image that I like a lot on from this shoot. So let's see. I will go out of export. Just go to the regular adjustments. First thing I'm going to do is a tone curve edit. It's still generating previews once it finishes that. So that is one thing you do want to do is you want to make sure all the previews are done for the program to be more responsive. So we'll wait for it to finish that and then we'll be right back. Looks like it is finished. So we're going to go ahead and start adjusting this image. As you can see when it's not when it's not generating uh, the thumbnail previews, it, it's pretty good. We're going to be kind of light on the shadow contrast levels here. That looks pretty good, but I am going to bump the shadows up just a bit. Maybe bring the exposure up just a tad. Now, if you bring highlights down super low, you get banding just like in Darktable. So, but if you're more light handed with it, you get pretty good results and you can bring your whites down. That'll help, you know, and I'll probably just bring my shadows up just a bit more. But as you can see when I go into the image, looks good. Probably just cool the image a little bit. You know, that looks very, very good for that image. Now, just as a comparison for quality, I'm going to save this image out at 100%. We're going to export the image. And I'm actually going to rename this. We're going to name it Rapid Raw 2. Okay, and something I want to do is we're going to look at the quality of the image. So we're going to go here, go to Home, view it here. The image looks very, very good. We're going to go 100%. As you can see, the image looks very, very good, very sharp. I don't see any colored pixelation or anything. It looks very, very, very good to me. You know, there's not really, it looks, the results this program is very, very promising. But something I wanted to show, this image I edited in Rapid Raw and exported. And then I did the same image inside of Darktable. To me, Darktable, I got to this result very fast because... Darktable by default had the image exposed higher, like 0.7 stops, ex higher exposure. And over here, I exposed it higher, but I didn't do as much highlight recovery. And the white balance is different. Obviously, I cooled the image more in Rapid Raw. Darktable, honestly, do not like the way you do white balance in Darktable anymore, honestly, with the color calibration stuff. Honestly, it's okay if you have like a, uh, a color monkey display or a, a color checker passport is what I mean. If you have a color checker passport to where you can profile your sensor of your camera to get good results. But let's see, I'll go to 100 here just as a comparison to see how the two retain details. They're pretty much identical. You know, the detail and the hair is all there. Honestly, to me personally, I prefer the Rapid Raw export more because the skin tones, obviously, because I was able to rile it in by just isolating the color orange. <laughs> I was able to get skin tones to what I remember because this model, she's extremely white. So, so with this model, she's got more of a 
very light skin with freckles and dark table kind of really pushed the color orange but i was able to ring it in with rapid raw and it came out very good honestly prefer the rapid raw image over the dark table image the dark table image does look very very good compared to the rapid raw image but honestly for speed of editing and having the potential to replace objects in an image inside of uh, <laughs> your photo editor is honestly something that I really, really look forward to. But since we we're looking at that image, I did. Let me go here. here let's actually go 200. Yeah, I should have sharpened the image a little bit, but it does look good, you know with these images and this is a shoot from 2022 i believe but honestly with a photo editor or a raw processing tool like rapid raw i'm honestly thinking of getting more back into photography because man the ease of use is night and day compared to dark table and raw therapy and with the way it's reading raw files it seems to be supporting raw files faster than Darktable does and faster than raw therapy does. So what I want to do here, we're going to go ahead and go to the GitHub page. So the GitHub page, this is honestly where you have to download it. Looks like you got this Fujifilm, Fuji RAF X-Trans support and small fixes. This is the 1.3.0 version. You know, and I do have some Fujifilm files that I am going to run through here. And that's like what this is doing here with this film look. That's why I love tone curves <laughs> because I like mimicking film looks. So with this program, I may actually create some film presets for it. Let's see. They got a small performance improvement. They discovered a bug that caused the image to reload from disk every time the thumbnail was updated. Yeah, that would slow it down on slower systems. And of course, you've got your Mac OS where you have your Windows installs. You have an Arc 64, which would be ARM for Mac OS. And then you go down here, you have app image files for ARM under Linux. And then you have an ARM deb file an AMD 64 app image. I'm using the one installed from the Arch user repository, but I do think in a follow-up video, I'm probably going to use the app image and test that. So, you know, let's, uh, we'll go ahead and pull down this AMD 64 app image for the 24.04 Ubuntu version, just so it's a newer version of Ubuntu that it was built with. And I'll try to plug it in with my uh, comfy UI. As you can see, there's only four contributors to this program. It started as only one contributor. So honestly, it's lacking camera tethering, but honestly, you can use Darktable for that or some other program. But it is open source. Uh, the program developer that initially started this program is only 18. So my hope is that this program gets a lot of love from the Linux community and the open source community because I would like to see this program stick around and actually get full functionality of, I mean, it's already got enough functionality that I would use for my photo editing that I would ever do. But, you know, you got phenomenal masking tools. You know, I think I just need to use the app image and see how that runs. but. You know, I knew I would not put it on that very white background, but this is one of those ones where the masking using the comfy UI to remove, <laughs> to remove objects. So very much look forward to this program. You know, you can read the, uh, the idea stuff that they're wanting to do. So the GPU is using WGPU and a custom WGSL shader. So you know, it can get some performance improvements. Masking, using segment, anything. You can look into this, you know, the, the masking I am determined to get working because I've got some images that I'd like to, that I'd like to mess with. 
but definitely check this program out. It very much is a program I plan on going back and re-editing photo shoots that I have not looked at in years. Uh, because if I'm honestly going to get back into photography, this program is probably going to be at the center of that because the results it's producing, the ease of use, and honestly, just the straightforward look of it. This, in my opinion, is the first open source raw editor that I feel can actually compete against Adobe Lightroom. Just with the one thing that your AI acceleration on it is not in the cloud. You have to run it locally. So downloading AI models is going to take up storage space on your computer and you're going to need a GPU that will work with it. So, but let me know, would you like me to do any uh, other potential things with this program? I do plan on doing a whole series on it. The professional photography landscape under Linux definitely seems to be getting better. I didn't think we needed another raw editor, but this is actually something that I like a lot. It's straightforward and actually gives people that use Adobe Lightroom a path to using Linux with a raw editor that actually is straightforward and easy to use. Like, subscribe, share the video, comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this program, and I will see you in the next video. Later.